So many times I've heard small business owners complaining about the bookkeeping, that they don't have their books ready, their books are not uh, clean or proper, their bookkeeper is unresponsive, and basically they're flying blind as a result. They don't even know if they're making money or not, aside from looking into the bank account and seeing if there's any money. So that's unacceptable, and I decided to make a video discussing how to fix that situation. It's actually quite simple. Number one step, sign up for QuickBooks Online. Don't use the desktop even if your bookkeeper insists on it because it's key that your accounting software syncs in with your bank account and I'll explain to you why. So number one step is sign up for QuickBooks Online. It's inexpensive, it's great, it's very, very simple. Step number two, you can um, you need to make sure that your QuickBooks Online account is syncing with your main business checking account. And if you have several of them, then you have to sync those as well. If you use a credit card uh, for all your business expenses, sync that as well. So anytime you either receiving money or paying money out of your business then or into your business, that needs to be um, automatically transferred into your accounting software uh, as opposed to alternative, which is somebody hand typing every transaction by looking into a bank account. That's a nightmare, so let's not do that. So make sure that you have those accounts um, uh, connected to your QuickBooks Online account, right? It's very simple, QuickBooks Online. Um, has videos, has explanations, has instructions on how to do it. It's super, super simple. So once you get those connected, one important um, note about that is please make sure that you do not spend uh, your business funds for your personal expenses, right? So if you're gonna go out and um, let's say go shopping for a new outfit or something like that, or you know you wanna buy a gift for your friends or, or whatnot, a personal travel, do not use your business funds for that, your business accounts, because uh, as tempting and as convenient as it might be, it, it creates a lot of work on uh, the business side, on the accounting side. Don't do that, keep it very clean, so that's kind of critical. So that way when you do connect your uh, business banking accounts into QBO, QuickBooks Online, then every transaction that lands into QuickBooks Online is business-related transaction. I cannot emphasize that enough because it's a nightmare when you do it the other way and, and you have to explain yourself for every single transaction to your accountant. Oh yeah, you know, I spend this to buy, you know, uh, dog food for my puppy, right? So that's just uh, very inconvenient. You have to do it for hundreds if not thousands of transactions. That's where uh, the bookkeepers make the big bucks and that's where those big bucks uh, leave your pocket forever, right? So let's not do that. Step number three, after you connected your um, bank accounts into the QuickBooks Online, is let's reconcile them. Reconciliation sounds kind of interesting or weird, but it's actually very simple. You're basically telling your accounting software for every transaction that, you know, hit your bank, what was it? And a lot of times QBO is very smart because it's been servicing um, hundreds of thousands of businesses. It can pretty much figure out that, hey, if you went to Chevron and you spent like $40 there, that's, chances are it's probably gas. So it's actually gonna suggest and, and tell you, hey, you know, I see that this is, you know, with Chevron, is this gas? And all you have to do is just say yes and it lands into your book. You, know, you have to keep doing that for every transaction and even create the rules where you can tell QBO, hey, by the way, every time you see you know, the transaction from Gusto, for example, that's a payroll, or you know, make it as a rule so it automatically reconciles those transactions. So every time you see the electric company you know, related expense, that's payment for electricity, duh, right? So um, you can do that, create the rules, and make your job much easier because you're Business expenses are actually pretty predictable every month for the most part. They're the same thing. They're payroll, they're, you know, gas, they're lease, you know, mortgage or something like that. So uh, the more you use it, the easier it becomes. For those transactions that you're not sure about, just leave them. You can um, ask the professionals, ask the bookkeepers about where to land them. 
uh, in the chart of accounts. So what is chart of accounts? Basically, chart of accounts is the list of all the categories of income and expenses that are sitting in your QBO, right? Like such as gas, such as payroll, such as, you know, sales, um, transactions and things like that, or credit card processing fees. So basically the itemized list of everything, everywhere, like all every account is where you're going to be lending some sort of transaction, right? So chart of accounts is pretty standard affair. However, you can customize it. Um, and in the beginning, I do recommend you engage a bookkeeper or CPA to set them up properly that it matches your business. But even if you don't want to do it or you can't do it, then just using the standard QBO um, chart of accounts is fine, right? Unless your business is highly unusual, uh, which hope it's not. So if it's a normal, regular business, then normal, regular, standard chart of accounts should be fine for you. So assuming you have that, then all you have to do is just basically tell QBO for every transaction that went through your bank, what was it? Where does it land into your chart of accounts? So after you went through all of these uh, transactions and landed them in the correct accounts or approximately correct accounts, you can always get them reviewed by a bookkeeper. You, why is it important, right? Why is it important that you understand what's being done or even you control um, this reconciliation or at the very least inspect it uh, as often as possible. It's because after all the transaction land, you can see your bottom line. How much money did you make? And if there's any problem, like you realize that, hey, I didn't make that much money actually. I made less money or I actually lost money, right? You can see what the problem is by looking at your profit and loss statement, p &L. So in the QuickBooks, there is a button for reports. And one of the reports is profit and loss statement. So after you reconcile your transaction, all you have to do is just go into uh, profit and loss statement report, click on it, choose the period that you want to see, you know, assess your performance for. It could be year to date, could be um, this month, could be um, whatever you want, right? Uh, and then what I want you to do is select uh, also where it says that select comparison um, period or something like that. If you toggle it, you'll see one of the items will be, one of the options will be choose, compare, compare with percentage of income. So go ahead and check mark that and then click on run the report. So once you do that, you'll see that not only will you see if you made any money, so you go all the way down and you can see where it says net income. And so whatever that number is, that's the result of your business activity. That's how much money you made. So hopefully it's a pretty nice amount. And if it's not, uh, do not despair. We're gonna like kind of like gaze upwards and see uh, where the money went, right? So you made 100% of the money and then uh, what I want you to go uh, to do is look at your COGS, cost of goods sold or cost of services sold. So that typically involves your whatever labor and materials you need for production of you know, your service or supply. It doesn't include office expenses. And I actually uh, made a video about COGS and why they're so important. And they're on my channel, so make sure to watch that explanation. But when you look at COGS, um, it will tell you a very important number. So if your COGS are like 70 or 80%, that's typically not good. It's actually really bad. So we'd like to see COGS around 50% or below. So which means that there's enough margin for you the, the, if you spend like 50% or less on labor and materials to produce your service or product, then you have plenty of room to pay yourself, to pay administrative staff or management, to pay lease, to pay advertising and all the other expenses and still make pretty decent profit. So we're in service industry, we try to shoot for at least 20%, 30% is even better, but 20% is a good margin for us. So if you see like 5% or below or 10%, that's a cause for concern. And then you start looking upstairs to see how does your cog look? And eventually, essentially uh, what you'll probably discover if your profit is very small, if it's like your net income is only 5%, uh, if you look upstairs, you'll see your cogs are gonna be much more than 50%. And that's the key. You're gonna need to adjust your cogs, reduce your uh, labor costs, or reduce your material costs. Uh, comparatively to your income, right? And so that amount of amount of money or percentages that you're gonna save on top is gonna go straight to your bottom line 
and make your business more profitable and healthy. I hope that makes sense. If you, if you don't understand it or have any more questions, please let me know in the comments below and of course, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more of these important uh, business insights.